We want to uh, take a moment before we dive in and say a huge welcome to all our virtual members of Columbine United Church. Those of you who join us literally across the United States and around the world, it is so good to have you here. Let's give them a warm round of applause. <laughs> however, however, I have a challenge. I have a challenge for you. And actually, it's, this is my challenge for all of you. You know, today, Columbine United Church takes a bold step forward. And it's something that, that um, I was actually going to say this right before you said it. You know, I've preached, spoken to you approaching 6,000 times. Approaching 6,000 times over 30 years. And I think in many ways that, that everything I have said is preparing me for this one sermon. If, if I die today after the service, I will feel glad because I can go to heaven and say, I did it. Now, here's what I want you to do. After this service, it'll be up this afternoon on YouTube. My challenge to you and to all of you is to take the URL and post it on your Facebook page and say, I believe this. So it's not just liking it, but it's making a very bold and public statement that this is who you are as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, as a Presbyterian, a Methodist, or United Church of Christ, or a Lutheran, or a Baptist, or whoever, you post this, and you say to the world, and definitely to your friends, this is who you are. It's good to have you here. I texted Justin and Mitch this morning, and I said, I'm a little amped up. Our scripture passage this morning comes to us from Matthew's Gospel, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28, one of my favorite passages uh, from the New Testament. Listen for God's word as it comes to us today. From there, Jesus took a trip to Tyre and Sidon. Let me just set the context a little bit. The disciples and Jesus had been traveling around. They wanted to, I don't know, take a break, take a vacation. So they go to the region of Tyre and Sidon. They, they had hardly arrived when a Canaanite woman came down from the hills and pleaded, Mercy, Master, Son of David, my daughter is cruelly afflicted by an evil spirit. Jesus ignored her. The disciples came and complained, Now she's bothering us. Would you please take care of her? She's driving us crazy. Jesus refused, telling them, I've got my hands full dealing with the lost sheep of Israel. Then the woman came back, went to her knees and begged, my microphone is popping like crazy. Master, help me. Jesus said, it's not right to take bread out of children's mouths and throw it to dogs. She was quick. You're right, Master. But beggar dogs do get scraps from the Master's table. Jesus gave in. A woman your faith is something else. What you want is what you get. And right then, her daughter became well. And here the reading ends, and may God bless these words as we seek to apply them to our lives. Can you feel the earth move? You know, it's really fun, uh, John Hausman. John, you are, you are a great blessing in this congregation. You can also be a pain in the... Uh, <laughs> John's been planning this service back before Christmas. And I said, uh, John, I got to get through Christmas Eve. Don't bug me. Because he kept on saying, what are you going to preach on? What are you going to preach on? And I said, John, let me get through Easter before, you know. And then June, John, I got it. So, you know, when I started uh, uh, doing um, this, uh, this sermon, preparing the sermon in my head, I kept on uh, feeling this song, this one song kept on running through my brain from Carol King. Um, now, those of you who are not baby boomers, let me explain 
This, this thing is called an album cover. <laughs> that um, it was, they were about this big. And you see, can you see the ring kind of on the outside? That's from the LP. They were called LPs, and they slid. And there's a few of you going, I can see. That was the record that kind of slid in there. And there was no respectable baby boomer who did not have. Yeah, baby, who did not have Carol King. And, and as I was preparing uh, this, this, uh, this sermon, one of her most favorite uh, famous tombs kept on going through my head. I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky come tumbling, tumbling down. I feel this earth move under my feet. I feel the where is that tune going? Bye, bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. You know the whole thing, white men can't jump? You know, so I said, Mitch, should I learn the tune and sing it? He said, no, please. Donnell sings it much better than you do. I feel the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky tumbling down. I feel my heart start to tremble. why this song has been going through my head is because for me the earth has been moving underneath our feet and we don't even realize it as a culture you know the earth is tumbling down things have dramatically changed in who we are as the United States of America there is a new paradigm that is now it's just not ahead it is here it is a foregone conclusion that every single state in these United States will recognize and perform same-sex marriages. It is assumed that people will have and celebrate the same rights regardless. You know, and, and, and for some of you, it's become like old news. Oh, another state. Oh, it's another state. I mean, this is how old of a news it is. This, you know, Justin was the one who pointed this out. Uh, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church uh, met this past June. And uh, the big news out of the Presbyterian Church was that by a margin of like three votes, the Presbyterian ch Church chose to divide, divest of companies who do business in Israel. I'm going to preach on that in, in just a couple of weeks. Um, that was headline news. 
People burning up talk show telephones. They were leaving. They're leaving the church. They're leaving the denomination. How dare we do divest? <clears throat> also at that general assembly, the Presbyterian church agreed to allow ministers to perform same-sex marriages. They changed the book of order to say that marriage is not between a man and a woman, but between two people. <sighs> That was somewhere buried, you know, down three or four pages deep. That is a, uh, a foregone conclusion. That shows you how much the culture has shifted. That suddenly we're kind of awakening as the United States that, that, that this torch, this light is here, it's burning. You know, the, the, the thing for me is that, that uh, this, this torch was passed to me um, by, by the clergy before me. Um, I'll never forget Hervey McFerrin, a, a pastor who, I'll never forget when I was a young minister, that there was a heated meeting at the presbytery about ordaining uh, gay, lesbian, trans, uh, transgender, bisexual people, and it got trounced. And I'll never forget Hervey leaving that, ready, that, that presbytery meeting saying, I hope to live to see the day. Well, Hervey died. Uh, I'll never forget kind of when Hervey died. I kind of felt this torch. And, you know, and, and I, oh, I've been fighting for this, fighting for this. And I never thought I'd see the day. In fact, one of the reasons why I feel as though God brought Justin into my life was because I felt as though that, you know, I could give the torch to Justin and say, never stop, never let go. Never, never, never back down, no matter what. Pass this torch on until it's happened. <laughs> the light on. It's kind of still right here in my hands. Our hands. You know, so the real big question, because so why, so why do Pride Sunday? I mean, huh, it's huh, kind of Passe, right? I wonder how many churches across the United States do a Pride Sunday. I bet you could count on one hand the number of churches who do Pride Sunday. Because, you know, we, it's just kind of part of our life. It's part of our life. But, you know, there are 80 nations in the United States where, it, I'm sorry, there are 80 nations around the world where it is illegal to be same-sex attracted. In these countries that are flashing before you, it is a capital offense. In these countries, if we were to do a service like this, the service would be interrupted and stopped. And I would be arrested, and Justin would be arrested, and Joe would be arrested, and we would be disappeared. If we were to do this service, it would be interrupted. Andy Sexton would be arrested. Terry Townsend would be arrested. Richard Borum would be arrested. Jeannie Keel would be arrested. Rick Hen would be arrested as the executive level of the board. They would be disappeared. Members of the church, you, some of you would be arrested just to harass you. The openly same-sex attracted members of our congregation in these countries would be arrested, tortured, and executed. In one country, by beheading. In Iran, since 1979, Four thousand same-sex attracted 
human beings have been executed. Primarily by stoning. India, one of our major trade partners in the United States, progressive India, last year made it illegal with a sentence of a life term to be same sex. We don't even need to look across the globe. This is the fence that Matthew Shepard was tied to in Wyoming. Pistol whipped, beaten, and left to die. This is why for me, Pride Sunday is something that I take a great deal of pride in. This is why this Sunday I call upon all Christians, I call upon all churches, I call upon all denominations, I call upon all spiritual leaders to set aside your petty wrangling about who can and who cannot be ordained. Set aside your petty wrangling. I'm tired of your petty wrangling about who can and who cannot be married. I want you to set aside your petty wrangling and to stand to a greater vision that God has for God's people. I want you to set that aside and I want you to stand with the prophet Jeremiah. I want you to stand with the prophet Ezekiel. I want you to stand with the prophet Isaiah and Amos. I want you to stand with Martin Luther. I want you to stand with Martin Luther King Jr. I want you to stand with Mahatma Gandhi. I want you to stand with Mother Teresa. I want you to stand with Pope Francis. And I want you to stand up and I want you to say that God will not be silent that God will not be still until these oppressors are removed from power, until this oppression stops and this ugly hatred that infills our entire global culture is eradicated from the human vocabulary. Stand tall, Christians, today. Amen. Stand tall. Stand tall. One of the most profound things about today is I think that we begin to understand that it is not okay to call a child of God a dog. This is what I, I take from this, uh, this passage today from Matthew's Gospel. I love this story. This is a story when, when Jesus had to uh, listen to his own teachings. Um, he, uh, he and the disciples had been traveling about and they were tired, and so they decided to go to the region of Tyre and, region of Tyre and Sidon. Um, Mitch, could you give me a drink of water? Someone give me a drink of water, thank you. Um, got a little riled up there. Uh, <sighs> um, they went to the region of Tyre and Sidon to take a break, which I think is kind of funny because they're, they're not welcome there. And it would be like, you know, an Israeli today deciding to take a vacation in the Gaza Strip. <laughs> Not a good idea. Not be welcome. And, and while they are there, um, a woman who has a daughter who is demon-possessed comes to Jesus and, and says, would you please, you know, heal my daughter? And he refuses. She starts going to the disciples. The disciples are bugged so much that uh, they come to Jesus and they say, would you please do something? Quiet the lady. And, and the, the lady comes to Jesus and, and pleads to, uh, to, to, to heal her. And he says, it is not good for me to take the food that was meant for 
the lost sheep of Israel and throw it to the dogs. The master, this called a woman, a dog. The Messiah, this called a woman, a dog. The one whom asked for a drink of water. The one whom they said, upon his shoulders, the government shall rest. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Almighty God. This called a woman, a dog. And in our society, and in that society, that was a very impolite thing to do. The master was having a bad day. The master was having a bad day. The woman didn't miss a beat. And she said, yes, yes. But don't the dogs get to feed on the crumbs that drop onto the floor? Now, in the Gospel according to Pooh's Benson, the story goes like this. Jesus sat back in his chair. And, and all of a sudden, teachings, his own teachings, began moving through, through his brain. In my father's mansions, there are many dwelling places. I have sheep of other pastures. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Greater love hath no man than they lay down their life for a friend. The greatest commandment, I love the Lord your God, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I love your neighbor as yourself. And, and tears filled the master's eyes. And he looked at the lady and he said, you're right. You're right. They call me Savior, but today you have saved me because you have opened my eyes to why I have truly come. And then he did something that no Hebrew man would ever do. And he reached over and he touched the woman and said, Daughter, your faith has healed your daughter. I love that story. Because you know what we hear and see is a man who makes mistakes and is able to learn from his mistakes. And that's why he is a master. And what I pray is happening in the Christian church and around the world, but especially in our culture, that we have learned that, that we've made mistakes. And it's time to, to quit making those mistakes. We have learned that, that it's not okay to call any child of God a dog. It is not a part of the teachings of Jesus to call any child of God, regardless of anything, but today especially because of sexual orientation, it is not okay to call them a dog. And this, unfortunately, is what the church has done for 2,000. And oh, if the church had only limited themselves to mudslinging for 2,000 years, 
the Christian church has endorsed and in some cases led the parade in the arrest, the torture, and the execution of same-sex attracted children of God. This is why I have a bit of passion around this topic. This is why we cannot equivocate. This is why you must be crystal clear. This is why you have to post this on your Facebook page. This is why you have to show this to your friends and to your family that this is who you are and this is what you believe in because when you are silent, you give tacit approval to hatred. When the church in Germany was silent, they gave tacit and direct blessing to the Third Right. Jews, scholars, gypsies, same-sex attracted people, were sent to the ovens, while Christians in churches sang Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. When we wrangle about who can and cannot be ordained, who can and cannot be married, What we do is we give tacit permission to the government and to the civic society to do the same type of wrangling. It's okay, she has to go to the bathroom. (laughs) When, When we wrangle and when we make decisions about somebody who can't preach, when we exclude them, or they can't be married, when we say it's illegal, what we do is we don't give tacit, we give direct permission to civic governments to do the same. Why should we be upset what India is doing when our churches and denominations do the same? And when we give that type of tacit approval to other nations, why should we be upset with an Iran or to any one of those other countries? Because their action is a hair breadth away from making it a life sentence. This is why I believe God is calling us to set aside the wrangling, get over it. There is a greater vision that God is calling us to, and it is Christians, children of God, followers of Jesus, who must lead this parade of justice must lead this parade of justice for God's children. At some point, Christians need to come to terms with this verse. And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. At some point, This verse has got to trump Leviticus. At some point, we have to say, did God say that all was good? All the Christians, all the Jews, all the Muslims, all the Baha'i, all the Buddhists, all the Hindus, all the Taoists, all the pagans, all the Wiccans, all that God had made, and said, and behold, it is very, very good. At some point, followers of this man have got to come to terms with this teaching 
Pastor, what is the greatest commandment? The first is like this. Hear, O Israel, the, the Lord is God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Notice, there are no qualifiers. Notice, he does not say, unless they are, you don't have to love them. At some point, love thy neighbor has got to trump, they are an abomination. How can you, on the one hand, Say, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and on the other hand, condemn other people who disagree with your faith to hell. When he has said, love your neighbor. How can you love your neighbor to hell? At some point, people who follow this man, who believe in his teaching of love thy neighbor as thyself, have got to wrestle with how does that wrestle, how does that equal up with they cannot, though, teach us or preach to us. The people who follow this man and say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, how can they then exclude women, same-sex attracted people, from taking an active place in our society, let alone our churches. To every single Christian who tells me they take the Bible literally, my challenge is take this verse here. Start here. I take pride on Pride Sunday because I believe our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender members and the people of our society have taught us the most profound lessons about what it means to follow Jesus. My best friend in high school was gay. I'll never forget the time on the quad, our senior year, when the football team cornered us and dared us to fight. And Don and I stood up, and Don was ready to tear into us. And his courage inspired me. And they backed off. After school, I went to my car. I put my hand on the handle and stepped back. And somebody had spat and spat, 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 spit, and 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 spit, getting in that car and turning on the windshield wipers and not be able to see because of the spit. And I wanted to get home before my parents got home so they didn't have to see the spit. And I washed it off, crying. 
And I cry today because I know that my friend Don Adams, his entire life has to wash it off. That's why for me, I take pride in this Sunday because I believe our gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people are some of the most courageous people in our society. And they deserve the such love and support because they teach us what it means to be a child of God. You are wearing a bracelet that says, you're beautiful. That's the message of today. You are beautiful, regardless. Let us pray. God, we come before you holding so many people in our arms and hands up to you. Knowing that just like Dawn, they suffer each and every day at the hands of other human beings. God, may we be the kind of people who don't just offer some cold opinion to ourselves, hold some private value or belief. May we be the kind of people who are willing to stand up and stand by, stand in front of, stand behind any individual who's being bullied by others. God, may we be the kind of church that stands up, says it's not just okay to tolerate. It's not even okay just to accept. Who stands up and says, these are other human beings. We will celebrate them because they're your creation, God. You delight in them and who they are, and their sexuality, their gender identity. And so we will too. We will celebrate. May we be the kind of church community that goes into our neighborhoods, goes into our homes, goes into our workplaces and our schools, goes into our government and says, we will not stand for inequality. God, you've been teaching us this prayer that tells us that heaven comes to earth. We know that it comes when we do your will. We lift up that prayer now saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you're sitting on the